CTV family. Good day to you all. Happy Monday to you and yours. It's a Monday afternoon. Thank you for choosing us as your source of information, education, as well as entertainment. As you know, this is XL Live, the biggest youth show in the motherland. We'll be with you right now till the hour of five. What is happening on the yellow couches? Let's get into that. I'm super excited to chat about this. Yes, well, right now we are with a chief executive officer, yes, at Crystal House. Well, if you do not know what Crystal House is, let us reintroduce it to you. Mm. The Crystal House South Africa is a non-profit school with a single mission to break the cycle of poverty. It offers no fee scholarship to students from some of Cape Town's poorest neighborhoods and support them for 18 years. That means Mdokala go grade R to grade 12 and five years post metric. So that's wonderful. Wow. Um, the school's beneficiaries include 750 students from grade R to grade 12 and 250 um, plus post-metric students and more than 3,000 parents and other members of the communities it serves. Well, the main criterion for admission to Crystal House is not evidence of talent, but evidence of poverty, one measure which a maximum average of income of 1,500 rand per household member per month. Now, key aspects of Crystal houses model include poverty mitigation services in the form of daily transport to school and back professional health care nutritious meals um, and counseling family assistance and college and career planning and support yeah um, I wish that there were more schools um, that can proud themselves for um, having 99% metric pass rate um, average since its inception mm. and 93% of its alumni are studying, working or both. In doing wow. so, Crystal House transforms the lives of its students and helps to build self-sufficient contributing members of South Africa. So this is a job well done by Crystal House. Wow, that sounds so amazing. Imagine being supported five years post matric. Like that's such an essential time for many people in South Africa's lives. Unga Libali Kim that they started from grade R. Mm. Wow, this yeah. is wonderful. Joining us via Skype will Audrey Marisa, who is a CEO at Crystal House. Good day to you, Audrey, how are you? Hi, very, very well, and thank you for having us on your show today. The things that you boast about, not everybody can boast about. 99% pass rates and supporting um, the learners that you're supporting post metric. Yeah. I applaud you guys. Thank you very much for what you're doing. Yeah. Audrey, so tell us a bit about Crystal House. Um, what does Crystal House, House offer the students? I think, you know, we, we see ourselves as a school, but ultimately we're a, we're a solution for, for an under-resourced society. So the first thing we offer, I think a bit earlier you said that we don't look for talent. Uh, everybody has got talent. And we see that over and over. Children just need an opportunity. But when you're in an under-resourced community, you never really get that opportunity because they never it's a resource for you to work into that. Mm. So what we offer you is an opportunity to to be your most beautiful self. And for that, we take we, we have a whole child approach. You can't be your best self in the well at school if you can't get to school. We have transport. You can't get to school if you're not you know, clean and wear uniforms, so yeah. we help you with that. You can't learn if you're hungry, so we give you food, et cetera, et cetera. We've got psychosocial support, nursing support. So one needs to resource a child, and when you do, you see the and blossom. And that is what we do from grade R to grade 12. And then, as you rightly said, for another five years. Deep. Wow. And where is Crystal House actually based? Well, it's actually an international school. So there are eight schools in the world, in Mexico and India, etc. Wow. Oh, Jamaica, yes. Uh, but we're the only school in Africa, in South Africa, in Cape Town, and more specifically in Ottery. Okay. I think teaching must be very difficult during these um, current lockdown challenges. How has Crystal House been dealing with um, teaching during a lockdown? Yeah, so we, sure, you know, at some level you think we never close because teaching has just continued, and I'll tell you about that. But more importantly, maybe before we look at teaching, there's, the country is so fixated on teaching. Um, and it's correct, but the very first thing we need to do is to take care of our people. People are hungry, um, they're anxious, they're fearful. 
um, they're supposed to do social distancing, but they live in high density spaces. Yeah. So very early on, when we prepared our school for closure, we have a hashtag people first approach to say, let's put ourselves first, the children first, our teachers and our staff, our community and our parents first, in terms of their physical needs, help with food, help with psychosocial support. Um, and then keep it with the curriculum. The curriculum has to do with continuous learning, but it also has to do with an engagement, a sense of being busy, a sense that life is normal and purposeful. So being busy with school is, is a much broader thing than just let's pump more facts into the kids' head. Mm. Uh, reality, though, we do do, our junior school was sent home with workbooks, um, and then they connect with the teacher on little WhatsApp pods every morning. Um, and our teachers are incredibly interesting because it's not so easy to do something in three minutes because doctor is expensive. So you've got to be a really, really focused teacher to, to reach out. And our parents can facilitate that process for us. In high school, they have tablets. We gave them some small, modest tablets. We got somebody to donate data. We got somebody to donate SIM cards. Um, and our high schoolers are learning from home through, through Zoom bursts. So the teacher comes up with a normal timetable, bursts them for 10 minutes on Zoom, and then offline with downloads and emails and assignments, etc. So it's phenomenal. Um, wow, how that sounds so amazing. Thank God for technology and thank goodness that um, the students are still able to learn and thank you for supporting them during this time. Again, with the students, tell us more about where they come from, which communities are they from? So we serve 20 of Cape Town's most impoverished communities. So our students come from Nanga, Manenberg, Lavender Hill, uh, Bontia, Wolf, Strathfontaine, Delft, Philippi, etc., etc. So we go to the poorest community that's got the least resources. And often, if it's a resource poor environment, you also see that the community is quite rife with violence, gangsterism, drugs. One of the things our children struggle with the most, really, not most, but one of the things, it's just really noise. How do you study when everything is? Full and very, very noisy, and TVs are blaring until yeah. 10, 11, 12 at night. Um, so it's a very, very difficult environment that our children come from. Yeah. Adri, I understand that um, you provide transport for learners to and from school. They do not buy uniform, you provide that. You also provide meals for the learners. Now, okay. is there any way that parents can contribute towards the school? Absolutely. So we're actually running a, a COVID campaign at the moment because we need to continue our support mm -hmm. with, with all these unexpected expenses that, that has happened. Um, and if you want to do that, of course, our website is www.sa, South Africa, sa.crystalhouse.org. Or um, you can Google any one of us. Our landline is 7049410. That'll come through directly to me. Or my mobile number, 082 3237 So I'm very happy to take personal calls, personal WhatsApps, reach out and, and see how you can support and become engaged. Mm. So Crystal House really offers holistic approaches to teaching and education and also supports um, the learners um, with health care. And why is this important and why is this part of Crystal House's approach to education? It's a, it's a very critical question with a very critical answer. The reality is that when one, one tends to want to focus on quality education, but you can't learn if you're not in a place to learn. Yeah. So what, what, what the Crystal House model does is to build proxies of what you see in privilege, hence transport. You won't get to school, you can't learn. Um, if you look at healthcare, uh, our food is an obvious one. If you can't, um, uh, you know, if you're hungry, you can't learn. But in terms of healthcare, for example, if you can't see the white, you can't learn. Mm. Attention deficit, for example, or you sit with tremendous trauma, yeah. or your stomach is sore, or um, say, for example, you have a rash, which sometimes some of our children might, might have, you know, for whatever reason, and, and you're itching, but you, you can't focus. Mm. So all of these things, whether it's physical health or psychological health, it's really important to have those aspects in order for the talent to blossom. And it's not always that clear when you're in a classroom and you take that for granted in a privileged school. 
Yeah. But in the public school, the teacher will text the mother, and the mother will text the doctor, and you know, and and the cycle of support then reinforces the child's ability to learn. Audrey, you you work with a child for eighty years and five years post matric. Um, do you really see the end success when that child starts working thereafter? Definitely. So that is, I mean, that is one of the beauties that we, we allow children to start with us at the age of five. They turn six. They're just these little things, you know, their feet can't even touch the ground when they sit on a chair. And then they go through teenage then, and then they leave school. And then, yes, in post school, we hold them for five years. We help them to connect to bursaries and learns, placements at universities, placements and jobs. And then we measure that success. So currently, 93% of our post-schoolers are either employed or they're studying. And of course, we encourage them to study post-school. And we call that that the organization is based in character and focused on careers. Yeah. Because if you look at that, um, what is really important is, again, there's a lot of emphasis on the curriculum as if the content alone is important. But what is important is who the person is grows with that content. So for us, we, we base our work in character building. What does responsibility look like? What does resilience look like? What does independence and integrity look like? Um, this month is the month of compassion. And we receive beautiful little photos from the little ones who've done compassion collages and posted it on their windows outside their homes. Um, and, then it's, and then it's career focus. Where is this leading you to? And our kids study. And then they finish, and then they get jobs, and then they become self-sufficient, economic, contributing members of society, which is what, what we are about. Yeah. With the COVID-19 and the lockdown, obviously, we are forced to do things differently, and there is, with the Crystal House, it is not an exception. So when we return from an ad break, Uyu Junior Sibanda is going to be telling us what are the new admission processes to the Crystal House. But before we let you go, Adri, Please give us those contact details one more time if people want to get in contact with you. Uh, so it's 021-704-9410 will come directly through to me. And my own mobile number is 082-774-3237. Those are the two. Those are my personal numbers. You're welcome to contact me and I will direct you from there or on our website. Uh, Eugenia will cover that as well but it's sa.crystalhouse.org. Yeah. Audrey, thank you so, so much. Right now, we're going to take a quick ad break, and we'll be right back. Don't go away. CTV Family.